Hey guys, Rami here with the third stimulus check update and stimulus package update. Today can potentially be a very, very big day for the stimulus package because it is expected that the Senate parliamentarian will vote on whether to include or not include the $15 minimum wage as part of the budget recon package. So this is very important. We're going to talk more about that and what the process that she's going through right now now and also i wanted to share what mitch mcconnell said on the senate floor in regards to the stimulus package i've been sharing a lot from what the democrats think about the stimulus package and we know exactly what they think about the stimulus package they want to pass it and move on and the ball is currently in their court so that's why there's a lot of information coming from the democrat side but i also wanted to show you what the republican point of view is about the stimulus package so you have the full picture because you guys know i don't take sides on this channel so i want to give you the full picture and maybe see if Mitch McConnell has some valid points there or not and I would love to see and read your thoughts in the comments below so let's get right into the video right after you please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already all right so now Miss McDonough, a figure little known outside the Capitol, but crucial to those who work there, has been thrust into the spotlight as a critical player in Democrats' fight to keep Mr. Biden's pandemic aid plan on track and intact. That's right. I mean, figure little known outside the Capitol. I personally haven't heard of her until we heard about this whole process about the Senate parliamentarian needing to um, vote whether this is a measure that agrees to the bird rule or not, which means whether it affects the federal budget or not. As the arbiter of strict Senate rules that limit what can be included in the package, Ms. McDonough has become the subject of an intensive lobbying campaign by senators in both parties to bless their favorite items or nix those they oppose. Studies and reports have been obtained, arguments drafted, and tea leaves obsessively examined, all in a bid to persuade Ms. McDonough, who will determine the fate of several key liberal provisions, including a federal minimum wage increase Mr. Biden has championed. The decision on the wage increase could come as early as Wednesday, today. Bernie Sanders said that she has listened attentively to our position, she'll listen attentively, I'm sure, to the other side's point of view. We believe and hope she will rule in our direction. We don't know yet. Ms. McDonough's outsized influence is a result of the decision by Democrats to use a fast-track budget process known as reconciliation to push through Mr. Biden's stimulus plan. So the only reason this is important now is because of this budget recon method, and we knew that. The tactic protects the package from a filibuster, allowing it to pass with only a simple majority vote, circumventing Republican opposition. But it also comes with stringent rules that require the components to meet certain budgetary standards, and it is up to the parliamentarian to rule on whether they do. That's a lot of power for this one person. But they say she has integrity, intelligence, and strength, and she's going to need all three for what's coming up, according to Senator Susan Collins, who is a Republican of Maine. The parliamentarian declined a request for an interview, but has said that she sees her job as an institutional one, not a partisan one. This is very important. She has said before, I represent the interests of my unseen client, the institution of the Senate itself. So like we said, this is going to be a very, very important day because it is expected that she's going to release her, her ruling, if you will, um, about the $15 minimum wage, whether to be included or not included in the budget recon. Now, once I hear an update on that, I'll make sure to bring it to you. Now, let's listen into what Mitch McConnell said, because like I said, I like to share both sides of the story and I'm interested to see what the Republicans think about this stimulus package. So let's listen in kids in the public school system have been robbed of a year and counting of anything resembling a proper education. It's been an historically tough year. That's why Americans are so excited. Our nation appears to be approaching a major turning point. Here are just a few recent headlines. A U.S. vaccine surge is coming with millions of doses promised. Another headline, America's vaccine rollout has been among the best in the world. Another headline, CDC finds scant spread of coronavirus in schools with precautions in place. Here's one from my home state. COVID-19 cases plummet in Kentucky nursing homes, a key target for the vaccine. So let's take a look at the economy. U.S. retail sales surprise with sharpest advance in seven months. Blue-collar jobs boom as COVID-19 boosts housing, e-commerce demand, 
Another headline, consumer demand snaps back, factories can't keep up. So to be clear, this isn't over. The battle's not won yet. But the day is approaching when we'll be able to end this defensive crouch and safely reclaim our normal lives. Last year, the Senate built the largest peacetime fiscal expansion in American history. We spent $4 trillion on five overwhelmingly bipartisan packages. The most recent just became law two months ago. Funding for hospitals and providers kept our health care system above water. The Paycheck Protection Program saved Main Street small businesses. Direct relief and extra unemployment aid helped working families endure the shutdowns. Operation Warp Speed laid the, ground, the groundwork for our historic sprint toward vaccinations. These were strong bipartisan policies targeted to what families specifically needed to wage the war. So here's here's my uh, problem with this. I kind of I this just came to mind while listening to this. I can see that the numbers of sales and stuff going up and they always report on this after a stimulus package passes. So this is what helps these numbers with the sales and that they're saying that the manufacturers can keep up and like the all that stuff that always happens right after a stimulus package is released because people get their stimulus checks, people get their unemployment money and they were able to spend again. But I don't think if they didn't if they didn't send this money or there was no stimulus package, I don't think these numbers will be any good. So this is a very, very tricky and something to, to keep in mind that if they didn't do any of that, if they didn't do any stimulus package, the country will be in a whole other situation. So stimulus packages do help boost these numbers. And that's the only reason why it's boosted. Now, if they had opened the country, if they do the stimulus package and then open the country and everything goes back to normal and everyone goes back to work and restaurants can op operate at full capacity and all these things, then maybe, OK, we don't need a stimulus package. But if we're still closed, we're still shut down restaurants. He's saying, you know, PPP money helps save small businesses and uh, restaurants. Not really. A lot of businesses went bankrupt and closed forever because the PPP money can only sustain them for a few weeks or a few months or, or whatever. But we've been this now closing on on a year. So the money that they got is not going to help them, especially if they keep operating at 25 percent capacity or 50 percent capacity or whatever it is. So this is the, the tricky part. And I do think that maybe hopefully, you know, in the summer or the fall will be almost back to normal with the vaccines, you know, fully distributed and a lot of people are vaccinated, we can achieve herd immunity and finally open up fully. And that's when we won't need a stimulus package. But that's just my opinion. Let's continue. But today, Democrats are steamrolling ahead with a massive spending plan on a completely partisan basis. They did not, re did not receive a single House Republican vote in committee yesterday because their partisan plan is not targeted toward helping Americans reclaim their lives and their country from this invader. Instead, here's what it is. A combination of miscellaneous, non-COVID-related liberal wish list items and the kinds of Band-Aid policies that make a defensive crouch slightly less painful, but don't help us get back on offense. Let's take a look at K through 12 schooling. Until very recently, the new administration's own scientists had been crystal clear. Earlier this month, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky said, quote, there is increasing data to suggest that schools can safely reopen. A major CDC study found in-person schooling does not, not fuel community transmission. Last month, Dr. Fauci said, it's less likely for a child to get infected in the school setting than if they were just in the community. But big labor special interests didn't appreciate science undercutting their political goals. The empire struck back. And the Democratic leaders who love to claim the mantle of science ran away from the science as fast as they could. Now the CDC director admits that, quote, the lived experiences, whatever that is, of government employees got between the hard science and the final guidance. Gets a lot of points for candor. The unions had spoken. 
The goalposts were on the move. And the White House keeps endorsing the idea that schools need the Democrats' new spending plan to reopen when the science disagrees. And furthermore, just 5%, 5% of what they propose to spend on schools would even be spent this year. Let me say that again. In this big COVID package, only 5% of what they propose to spend on schools would be spent this year. In other words, the spend out is over years ahead. You would think their view is we're never going to get over the coronavirus. The United Kingdom just announced they'll have kids back in school in less than two weeks, two weeks. Countries like Spain and France have had kids in classrooms for months already. The European Center for Disease Prevention has no problem affirming the science that closing schools is, quote, unlikely to provide significant additional protection of children's health, even here at home. Private and religious schools have been teaching kids in person for months without causing any explosion in the spread of the virus. Science tells us unambiguously that in-person schooling can be quite safe and that having young children spend all day staring into a laptop is a nightmare. The evidence is crystal clear. Big labor bureaucrats keep refusing to follow the science. In my hometown of Louisville, our union-backed school board vice chairman now asserts, with no evidence, I think we're probably likely to see better instructional outcomes if we stay remote for the rest of the school year. Ridiculous. No fact. What do you guys think of this? If you um, are a parent with kids who are uh, of school age, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you would want them to go to school. First of all, so you can work, whether you're working from home or you need to leave the house to work. Kids belong in the school. That's just my personal opinion. And he's saying that according to the science, kids going to school is not really a, a cause for um, coronavirus spread. So I don't know. I think... <laughs> Kids need to be in school. Pediatricians say that kids need to be in school. The learning in a school setting is way better and more important for a child's health and psychology and mental health and everything better than uh, just studying at home, looking at a laptop. But we'll see what happens. We'll see when schools will fully uh, open. No evidence, just a personal whim. These are the people controlling our kids' futures and their parents' lives. One anonymous teacher told reporters, quote, we already have a schedule and a routine going. We don't need to be babysitting for six weeks because parents are upset. <laughs> Let me say that again. One anonymous teacher told reporters, we already have a schedule and a, and a routine going. We don't need to be babysitting for six weeks because parents are upset. So by the way, failing grades in middle schools are up 388% in our country. Failing grades in middle schools are up 388% in our country while these kids are stuck at home. The Biden administration has a clear obligation to tackle the special interest madness head on. Our kids are suffering, not because science says they must be, it doesn't. Just because a small group of powerful grown-ups have decided they prefer it this way. Instead, the White House keeps parroting the anti-science myths. They back this notion that schools need the Democrats' new spending plan before they can reopen. Except that science completely disagrees, completely. Except that only a tiny fraction of the funding request would even be spent this fiscal year. Our children's futures are literally at stake. The administration's got to stop taking orders from the public sector unions that give generously to Democratic campaigns. This is Exhibit A in why relief legislation must be targeted to the actual needs that we face now. American families should be the starting point, not preconceived political priorities. All right, so this is a point of view of uh, one Republican senator, the minority leader, Republican Senator Mitch McConnell. What do you guys think? Do you agree with some of the stuff that he said? Do you disagree? Is there a middle ground here? 
Is it the 600 page to 591 page um, stimulus bill? Do we need all the stuff in it? It's 10% of the last stimulus pack, which is kind of weird. So the $900 billion stimulus package that passed in December was about 5,600 pages. This is 1.9 trillion and it's only in 591 pages. Very, very interesting. Anyway, this is all I have for you in today's video, guys. If I hear any updates from the Senate parliamentarian about the $15 minimum wage, I'll make sure to make a video about it and post it to bring you guys up to date. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you all. Please hit the like button on the video, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click that notifications bell to be notified whenever I publish new videos and new content for you. Also, make sure to check the links in the description below for the Yara Savings account and the Webull investment. Thank you again for watching. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.